Hi, this is Jimmy, and today I'm going to be covering how to use Notion on Android. So stay tuned. And we're back. So today, what I'm looking to cover is how to use Notion on Android. Uh, most people, I know a lot of people, myself included, spend a lot of time with Notion on desktop or Notion on web. But how do you use the Android client? Um, what's different? What's the same? How do you accomplish some of the same things that you do on your desktop or in the web in the Android client? We're going to cover that step by step in this video. Now, before I get started with this video, if you like this video, please click that like button. It really helps out the channel. If you are interested in more videos from me, please click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the little bell. Thanks. First thing we want to do is open up Notion in Android. So uh, here I'm using uh, my tablet. I'm going to pull up. Find Notion, pull it up, and it opens it up to my default page, which in this case is my personal projects page. So as you can see from the UI, it looks very similar to what you would see in the desktop browser browser or desktop application. So the first thing I want to do here by opening page, I can open pages by just simply pressing on the button uh, for the link. Um, go into my code snippets here as an example. I can see, you know, a table that contains all my code snippets. I can access that. And then you can see my code snippets here. Uh, if I wanted to add a file, I could click that in there. Um, I can change the date. If I wanted to change the date to some other date, I can do that. So it, it works very similar. And obviously it has the breadcrumbs along the top, which I just used. Um, so actually, let me just do that again real quick for you. So let's say I was in code snippets and I want to get back to personal projects. If you look here along the top of the screen, you'll actually see sort of a directory flow um, from fo master folder to subfolder to the sub subfolder. Um, Hopefully this doesn't go too deep. Uh, I'll start stumbling over myself. Um, so I can click personal projects, go back to my personal projects page and um, start from there. So let's start with the most basic thing. Let's add a new page. So I'm gonna click in the body here and the keyboard will come up. Now I can start just typing out text, um, like, you know, normal page, just, you know, this is a page using the other correct stuff um, and enter and it puts the text in there. Um, I can highlight the text uh, by simply double clicking on it and then dragging the little, I feel like uh, raindrops to me. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're supposed to be. Um, and I can select that. And then if you look here at this top bar here um, along the keyboard, this is the, um, the notion formatting bar. So there's a couple things I can do. I can bold by just pressing this B button here. I can unbold it by just pressing it again. I can italicize. I can use strike through code. There. I can hit the code button to turn it into a piece of code. Hit it again to turn it back. I can convert it into a link. So let's say I wanted to make this text. Let's say this text instead said um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to be a link. And then I just double click it. And then I go to link. It's going to bring up um, a place where I can put my link. So I'll put in the productive engineer dot net. And of course, I spelled it. Oh. And I'll just put the T on the end here. I'll correct it because I don't know how to type. I'll hit link to create the link. And now that creates the link. So if I actually hit that, It'll launch out and it will go and render my web page, which is my blog. And if you haven't visited it, you should check it out. So I'm going to go back using the back button. I'm going to come down in here and let's see um, what we can do. So obviously now we know how to manipulate text a little bit. Uh, that's sort of the most basic thing you can do in Notion. But how do I add blocks? Um, for those who are new to Notion, or this may be your first video um, about Notion that you're watching, blocks are the pieces of functionality that Notion has that you can add to a page. 
Um, Notion is nothing more than a series of wiki pages that are interlinked together in a folder structure or by adding links uh, to other pages. The powerful part of Notion is that you can add pieces of functionality to it that extend it. So by hitting, if you come down here and you click where you want to place that um, that block, you, there's a little plus button in the, in the um, format bar. I can click that and it brings up my block menu. So, and then you just scroll along, as you can see, as I'm doing here, and you have all the same ones that you have on the desktop or the web. You have your basic blocks like text and page and the headings and the lists, dividers, etc. You have your database ones, the in, both the inline ones. It's slightly different here, whereas on the desktop, I believe the table inline and the table full page are together. Here, all the inlines are in together, and there's all the full pages which is slightly different. You have your create link database. We'll do that in a little bit. You can add media like images, videos for YouTube, audio files, just like you could do before. And then you have your embeds, right? You want to embed a Google calendar. You want to Google, um, a Google map. You want to embed a PDF, whatever you want to do. All of those things in here, a bunch of services, a loom video. Um, many of these I have videos for, um, or blog posts for on my blog. So, um, you can check those out. And then you have your advanced blocks like a table of contents. You can add equations. You can create, use a template button. So you can actually build um, custom templates. And I have a video to that as well. I'll put it in the uh, video um, notes. But let's start with the most basics and we'll work our way up. So let's make a page. So let's click the page and it puts me on a new sub page. Um, it should look very familiar. Um, the layout is essentially exactly the same as it is in the desktop client. I can give this a title, um, let's say test page one because I'm creative and then there's a couple of different ways you can add content to it um, one is I can um, select any one of these here so I can add a table or board um, I could use some of their templates here they have a whole bunch of templates um, and that's what all of these are or um, I could use the plus button so I can come down here now if I type slash just like on the desktop, guess what? I get all my blocks, just like I do on the desktop. So you, depending on what's faster for you, whether um, most cases, if you're, if you're using like a keyboard with your Notion tablet, as an example, it might be faster to type the slash. Um, but if you're on your phone um, or, you know, you don't have a keyboard attached, most of the time it's probably gonna be easier to just hit the plus button rather than, because to me, at least for me, it's two clicks um, to hit, to get into that slash menu because I have to hit the um, symbol key on the keyboard and then hit the slash, whereas the other way I just hit the plus button and then go right to the menu. So I would recommend doing that. Um, but again, the same thing. So if I want to add, let's say a to-do list, I hit to-do list and I can put in to-do and I can say to-do one, to-do two. Um, what else can I do here? Um, I'm looking for my tab button here. Of course, I can't find it because of, uh, uh, but one of the things you can do um, is hit enter again and then looking for my tab here, uh, which I don't see. Um, oh, there it is. You can move it in. One, it's on the uh, actual on the format button here. So I just learned something new. Um, so it so that actually indents you one, or I can hit the, the button to the left and move it back out. Um, I can say this is a sub bullet. A sub to do, I guess, subtask maybe be a better way to say it. <laughs> so I stumble over myself. And then if I want the next one to be just a regular one, I just hit that again. And then I can hit get out of it by just hitting enter twice. And it takes me out of that block. I can add another block. I can come in here and add a heading. And I can say heading one, because again, why use creativity when you don't need to? Um, so you have your headings there. I can come back in, hit the plus button this time just to mix it up. I can come down here, create a numbered list, and I can say one, two. I can tab in one to create a sub, you know, nested list. My fingers are fat, as you can kind of see. So <laughs> as a result, hit these, the, the, the touch um, on these, um, the touch um, targets, if I can learn how to talk, um, are a little small for my fat finger. So that's why it's taking me a little longer on some of these. And I can say one again as an example. And now I have hit, you know, 
then come back out and hit enter and then it'll go back. And I'm out of that. I can add yet another, um, I can add a divider, right? And then come down here underneath the divider. If you look at my screen, um, you can see the dividers in there. Um, you can also add things like um, oof, a table, right? That's everybody wants to add tables. So you hit a table, and guess what? Comes up just like normal. You give a table, like um, uh, Android table. I don't know how to spell Jim. Oh my gosh. I am horrible today at typing. And my tablet. <laughs> That's close enough. Um, I can click a first field in there. Um, let me just explain what I did there. Um, went a little too fast. So it gives you the table. It comes with the same defaults as the desktop application has. So when you're looking at, you have the name field, you have the tags, and you have the files. If I want to add another column, I can just hit the little plus button, which I'll do here. And let's say I wanted to add a date um, property. So I'll come in here to rename. Let's say date. Oh. Let's try this again. Date. I'll come in here to property type. Click that. I will come down to where it says date. Click on that. And now I have a date tab. And if I click on there, what will happen is I get a calendar picker, right? And there's a couple of things in here, just like the desktop. Um, let's say I wanted it to be the 24th of April, and I wanted a um, end date of the 30th. So now I have a range of dates and you know, that'll show up just like it does on the desktop cl client. Uh, shows you that there. If I wanted to attach a file, hit the, um, the, the cell in there in the, under that column. It gives, brings me up this properties menu, which I can click that little button. And then I have choices, right? I can either choose something from the tablet or I can choose to embed a link from a URL. I'm gonna choose a file here. Of course, um, I'll go to a screenshot that I have. I'll upload that. And now it's in there. Hit done. And there's the file. I can add tags. So I can have a tag that says Android. Create it by clicking it and hit done. And now I have that tab. And this could be um, test item. And when I come in here, um, this is another place I can add, much like in the um, desktop application, I can add another property by simply clicking on the add a property value. And then come in here and I can choose something else if I wanted. Um, I can choose a checkbox. And actually I probably should have given it a name. <laughs> um, so let's say, um, is this, checked I don't know I, oh my god and this remove property here hit done and now I will check it <laughs> by just clicking on it and to make it true and now I can go back by just clicking back and now you can see I have that item remember every each thing in a table, each row of a table is essentially a page. So if I click on test item, it brings it up as a full page. Okay. So next, what we want to do is go back out to our test page. And let's say we want to add something else. So let's do, let's do a board. And it draws you a board. You give you a board name. We'll call this Kanban test by the way if you're looking for a, a tutorial uh, not to plug other vid videos but i do have a video on my channel that tells you all about kanban boards and notion how to use them um how to use kanban views on existing tables as well so you should check that out i will link it and i believe i'll put a link um, up here a little pop-up so you'll see it and the way you, a Kanban, what a Kanban board is, before I get too far, um, is think of it as a project management board that's very visual, that manages projects on cards that you move, much like a pin board, from column to column based on status. So you might have a stat, um, if you look at this um, look at the screen here, they give you a couple of defaults, not started, in progress, and completed. So, so this might be 
Um, this card might be um, Project A, right? I might go back, and Project A might not be started, so I can just click, hold, and drag, and put that in there. And now, when I click into it, you'll see it has a status of not started. I can have another one here that is Project 2. Not 22. Um, hit OK. Of course, I messed it up because <laughs> it's a test. Um, and then I can move that over to in progress. And then I can, you know, you get the idea, right? Um, I can actually take kind of wants to do this for sake of completeness. Um, project three. that back and we'll make that one complete so we'll move that all the way over to the completed column and you can add more columns um, as well so you don't have to feel limited so I can take this not started one I can double cl I can click on it and you can see I can edit it so I can actually change it by hitting the backspace and call this um, something else like in planning right and then now it's in planning, and when I go in there, it changed it to in planning. So it's all these things you can do on the desktop client. You can also do them in the Android client. Um, you can add a new group by simply scrolling to the right of your um, Kanban board. You'll see a button, a uh, grayed out button there that says add a group. You just click it, and then you can add a new column, and this one might be archive, right? Because sometimes when you have projects, once they're done, you don't want to clutter up your um, project board with um, non-active projects. You just want to have one column that kind of hide, has them all in it. You may hide that column at some point. Um, this one might say project four. Go back. And now if I scroll over, you see that archive has a project four in it. So that's how, you know, tables work in Android. I'm oh, sorry, tables boards work in Android. Uh, if I can learn to talk, I can come down here. I can come up in here and I can say, hey, um, let's do a calendar. I'll do an inline calendar. And I can do a calendar test. Wow. My spelling is horrible. All right. And as you can see, it gives me a calendar view of that calendar, right? Um, I can sit there on the 9th. I can click on a date and what it will do is it shows me that date that currently has no items. And if I want to add a task or a page or whatever to this date, I can hit new item and it's going to bring up the page um, menu here, not menu, but a page, a blank page. And I can say that this is a um, take dog to vet. And I can give it a tag. I can sit there and say doggy. Right, that's my tag. I create that tag. Hit done. And now I have, if I go back, I have a little dot. If I click on that little dot, it gives me a listing of my everything that's on there for that day. I have a doggy. If I go back and create another item, and this one is um, go shopping, maybe grocery shopping. And I also have that on the ninth. And this one, I'll give it a new tag that says shopping. Oop. Hit that OK. I'm really struggling with these small touch targets. Or I'm really struggling with my sausage fingers, one of the two. Um, go back. And now when I click on that date, I have two items, um, as you can see on my screen. So I'll hit done. And that gives you an idea. Of how this works, I can go back to my page, and the one of the things you can do with tables, obviously, is you can add a view, right? So I can sit there, and because this has a date view, uh, dates in it, I can add a calendar view to it. So I can say new view, calendar. I'll have to give it a calendar view name. I'll click on calendar, and I can hit create, and now that same table. In addition to having its default view, 
which if I go back, you can see it's the default view, it's the traditional table view. I now also have this calendar view, um, just like I do on the desktop. Um, and this is really one of the things I wanted to kind of point out right now. A lot of people think when you move to a desktop, from a desktop client to a mobile client, that you have like a huge loss of functionality. And since I've been playing with the Android um, version of Notion, which admittedly I've been doing for the last couple of days, I haven't really hit that. Um, pretty much everything I could do in the um, in the desktop client or on the web, I can do um, on the tablet version for Android, which well, tablet version, the Android version, and it runs obviously whether it's on a tablet or a phone. So. There's a whole lot of things you can do. Um, you, you can even embed things, just like you could do. Um, if I scroll down here a little bit, I can hit embed. And I can embed pretty much anything I want here. If I had a PDF or a Google map or something like that, I can embed that as well. And that would show up just like anything else. I'm actually gonna delete that because I don't have anything to embed. Um, but you get the idea. Um, the, the, I was really surprised in using this, how robust the Android client was for um, for um, Notion, if I can learn how to talk. Um, a lot of times I have that very same sort of um, predisposition to desktop apps because I always think they're more powerful. And um, while sometimes that is definitely the case, <laughs> there's a lot of apps out there that are you know absolutely better, at least in my opinion, um, on the desktop, um, Notion is pretty good on the, on the mobile clients, both on, for iOS as well as Android. If I was doing a ton of table work or um, doing database stuff or making you know spending a lot of time with data entry stuff, I still like having a full keyboard. Still like working on a big desktop. That's you know that might just be a more of a prejudice on my side of. Um, liking to work on the desktop rather than mobile clients. I've been thoroughly impressed with how well Notion works on the Android device that I have. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any uh, questions please or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I do read my comments and I do respond. And again, if you like this video, please click the like button because again, it really does help me and it would really be helping me out on the channel. Um, also, if you like these videos, um, please click the subscribe button. That helps kind of keep me going. It helps me um, look good in YouTube's eyes. Uh, also inspires me to make more videos. And if you want to be notified when I have um, videos that release, release, uh, please click the bell as that will create notification for you whenever I release a video. So thank you for tuning in and take care.